Hello and a warm welcome. I am Armin Trost, Professor for Organizational Behavior at the Furtwangen University in Germany and this is my course on Social Research Methods. So, hello everybody. Welcome to this episode. Today we talk about hypothesis testing. And um, I know from my experience as a teacher that many students don't do hard in comparing means. For instance, when they run a little experiment and they have means for different experimental condition and they find the difference. I mean, that's, that's fine. Yeah? It's, it's all easy. Yeah? But when, whenever it comes to the, the hypothesis testing, Many fall apart. <laughs> uh, and it seems to be a little bit weird to some students. All this matter with significance and alpha arrow, beta arrow, and nil hypotheses and all this. But, you know, it's not so difficult. And what I want to do in this hypothesis, uh, in this episode, sorry, <laughs> is I would like to, to bring across a little bit the fundamental idea of hypothesis testing so that at least if you do not understand the math you have an idea about what this is all about okay I mean this is one thing but I, I even want to go so far that you can do the math and if you really want to follow the mathematical procedure uh, it's really essential that you have understood the previous two episodes. I was talking in one episode about estimating mean and standard deviation of a population based on a sample. I was talking about this and I was also talking about how to estimate the standard deviation of the sample mean. Huh? What is this? The standard deviation of the sample mean. Okay, I come to this later, but, but that's something that we're talking about, right? And it would be good if you understand this. And, and the other thing is the, the Z distribution, where we talking about, we talked about how to standardize uh, distribution based on any kind of metrics. Okay, so if you have trouble with that, go back to these two episodes. So. Now, how about hypothesis testing? In social science, we create and we test hypotheses. I mean, that's what we do. This is something that we always do in science. We have hypotheses, and hypotheses are the building blocks of any kind of theory. So, this is with a social science. So, we have a lot of hypotheses in social science. The, the more cohesive a group, the higher is the probability of groupthink. The bigger the group size in additive tasks, the lower is the individual motivation to contribute. <laughs> you know, I mean, we were talking about this. We, I dedicated an entire episode earlier in this series about hypotheses, so I don't have to repeat what hypotheses are, but, but hypotheses is a proposition about the truth, right? So, here is the thing. What we differentiate in social science is nil hypotheses and alternative hypotheses. Okay, what is a nil hypothesis? Um, when I say, for instance, there is a difference in agreeableness between men and women. There is a difference. The nil hypothesis would say, no, there is no difference, even if you find one. Okay? The nil hypothesis always, they, they, very, they very often sound like this. There is no difference between <laughs> independent variable has no effect on dependent variable. There is nothing. Nil. Okay? That's the nil hypothesis. Okay? And the Alternative hypothesis is to say, well, there is something. Hmm? There is something. Okay. Now, 
What we do in hypothesis testing is we focus pretty much on the null hypothesis. And that sounds crazy maybe for a little bit for, for some of you, but, but just take it. Okay, so what could happen? Uh, there could be, it could be a decision upon whether you, you accept a null hypothesis saying, yeah, there is really nothing or reject the hypothesis saying, no, I don't, I, I would not say that there is nothing. This is a decision that you make. And, but there is also a truth. The truth, what, what, what actually is, you say, actually the null hypothesis might be true. There is nothing. In the truth, there is nothing. There is no difference between men and women with regards to agreeableness. Group size has no effect on individual motivation. That's the nil hypothesis. Maybe this is true. But maybe the nil hypothesis is not true, actually. In reality. Right? So we have our decision as scientists and there is a reality. And now there can be uh, certain mistakes that we do. I mean, but what we could do right is saying, okay, we accept the null hypothesis, there is nothing, and in truth, there is indeed nothing. Fine, okay. Or we can say, no, we reject the hy null hypothesis, there is something, and in fact, there is, there is not nothing. <laughs> the null hypothesis is not true. It's not true, and we reject it. That's, that's fine. Those, these are the two, two decisions which are, which are absolutely correct, but there are two mistakes that we could do. And one mistake is that we accept that there is nothing. We accept, no, there is no difference between men and women. We accept it. Hmm. But in reality, there is a difference. Hmm? That's the beta error. Error type 2. Beta error. Okay? What we focus on is the alpha error, is we reject the null hypothesis, we say, no, there is something, there is something, there is a difference, there is an effect, yeah, while, in fact, actually, there is nothing, okay, this is what we focus on, this is the alpha error, rejecting something while there is nothing in, 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 in reality, okay, and, and what we want to find out with hypothesis testing is, when we find the difference in means, for instance, between two experimental groups, when we find a difference, and you very often find a difference, we rarely find no difference, you very often find a difference. When you find the differences, when you find the difference, and you reject the null hypothesis, say there is something. How big is the probability that you reject the null hypothesis even though the null hypothesis is true. And we say when, when probability for, for having a difference like this, the one we found, uh, when the probability for having found something like this is smaller than 5%, even though there is nothing then we would say, okay, it's significant. And, and if probability falls, 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 falls smaller than 1%, then we would say it's very significant. Okay, I mean, let's, let's, have, let's have an example here, okay? Uh, maybe, maybe that helps. Um, let's, let's simply assume a practical example. Uh, there is a company and we have sales representatives, well, okay? And they, generate 1,000 euro revenue, revenue per day on average. I mean, that's what they usually make. Sell piece or whatever services, 1,000 euro in a day on average. Okay? And this applies for all sales representatives. That's the average. Okay. Now, let's say we have 30 employees in sales who attended a sales training. Okay, so these 30 people, they attended a training where they learned how to present, how to uh, persuade, they learned some 
sales techniques, uh, things that we know in psychology, like uh, the reciproca reciprocation principle or the foot in the door technique or whatever, right? So they learn all these things in the training. And, and then you look at, okay, those 30 people who attended the training, what is their average? How much do they sell? And we find, oh, they sell more. <laughs> they sell 1,100 euro per day. It's a difference, right? I mean, compared to the rest, to the average, when the average is 1,000. But they sell 1,100, which is 10% more. Okay? And when you look at the standard deviation of all salespeople, this is 250 euro. Okay? So... This is simply the starting point. And now the HR director might come across and say, ah, you see, ah, we offered this training, this sales training, and it works. Those who attended the training sell 100 euro more in a day. Oh, isn't that cool? The training works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's the nil hypothesis? The nil hypothesis is to say, the training has no effect on sales. Now you might say, but it has an effect. I mean, there is 100 euro. Yeah, 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 yeah. But could be random. Could be random. Now let's assume, okay, nil hypothesis. The training has no effect. This 100 euro, I mean, that's nothing. That's just by chance. Yeah. Okay. And there is actually not a real difference between those who are not trained and those who are trained. Right? In reality, yeah. uh, the alternative hypothesis, uh, in that case we, 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 we uh, name it the H1, is to say the training has an effect on sales. Yeah? The mean of those who are not trained is not equal to those who trained. Okay, which one is true? This is now the question. Should we, should we reject the nil hypothesis or not? Okay. Or in other words, how probable is it to find a difference of 100 euro per day, even though the nil hypothesis is assumed to be true? How probable is that? I mean, now you, you could ask your gut feeling, say, well, 100 euro difference, that's, that's a big thing, right? Huh? That's just your feeling. Yeah, feeling, that's 100. Yeah, it's, it's just your feeling. It's just a feeling. You want to know how probable is that you find such a difference even though there is none, right? Okay, that, 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 that's the question here, okay? So, what we do first, now, and you really can do it by your own. You can really do it by on a piece of paper, yeah? Uh, the first thing that you do is you calculate the standard deviation of sample mean. Oh God, was standard deviation of sample mean. Yeah, we had this. Yeah, when you pull when you pull a sample of thirty salespeople over and over again. Yeah, thirty one time. Measure the revenue. Another thirty. Measure the revenue again. You measure thirty. Measure the revenue. Yeah, you always get a mean, which probably somewhere around one thousand in a day. I mean, and you do this over and over again. Just think you would do this. Okay, you would not do this. Think you would do this. Every time you get a mean, right? And, and, and these means, yeah? How, do, how are they distributed? This is something that we can estimate. And we were talking about this in, the, in one of the, the, the earlier episodes. <coughs> so, we calculate it by saying, okay, let's have the standard deviation, with this, which is 250 euro, and divide it by the root square of n, which is 30. And the result is 45.6. This is what we get. 45.6 is the standard deviation of sample mean. We need this later. Okay? Okay? The mean of the sample is, uh, is 1,000 euro. I mean, we assume the uh, um, nil hypothesis is true. And we, we know that. We know it. It's the mean is 1,000. Right? Forget about these 30 who are higher. The mean is 1,000, okay? And we assume that this mean is a good uh, estimation of the population mean. The population mean mu, okay? 
So now the question is, and I repeat myself, how probable is it to have 1,100 euro sales when 1,000 is true? Hmm? So now to understand this, I mean, there is this difference, right? There is this difference and, and, uh, and now we have to standardize this difference and, and we, we transform it into a set score. And we were talking about this in the last episode. It's, it's easy to, to be done, right? And when we calculate the set score of this difference, then we get a result of 2.19, okay? 2.19. That's the set transformed value of 1,100. Yeah, and, and for this calculation, we need the standard deviation of sample mean because without a standard deviation of sample mean, you cannot transform this mean of 1100 into a Z score. You, you need the standard deviation, right? So you subtract, you take the 1100, you subscri subtract the mean that you have, and you divide the result by the standard deviation. Uh, of the sample mean, which is 45.6. So 100 divided by 45.6 and you get 2.19. Okay, 2.19 set score. How probable is it that by chance you get uh, a value of set equal 2.19 while zero would be the truth. <laughs> now, I mean, now you can go to the set uh, uh, distribution. And we were talking about this last time. And the probability to get a 2.19 by chance is lower than 5%, as we can see from the set distribution. Therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis. So, this is exactly what we do. Hmm? Okay. <sighs> huh? I think that, that's the most fundamental idea here. And of course we can go much deeper and we, we can look at different sorts of testing. I mean that's a big chapter. But what I want you to understand is this fundamental idea of assuming the null hypothesis is true and then look whether the difference we find, if, if, how, how, how is the probability that the difference we find, how is, how is that while there is nothing? So that you understand this fundamental idea. And that's basically it. Okay? So let's leave it to that. And I will, I will extend this, this, uh, this, this topic a little bit. And in the next time we're going to talk about about uh, variance analysis, which is probably the, the way to test hypotheses in an experimental setting. So it's still not over. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this in the next episode. So thank you and see you then.